Lester and Janie Ballard, who own a successful business in Little Rock, Arkansas, loved their only daughter, Leslie. Leslie had a comfortable life, growing up in a private school and getting a master's degree before joining the family business. But however, things changed when she met a man named Mike McCool, who was involved in illegal activities. Despite her parents' objections, Leslie married Mike and her behavior shifted. After Leslie's father passed away and they discovered changes to Leslie's inheritance, the Matt Cools had more than two million reasons to want Janie dead. But was it entirely Mac's idea or was it what Leslie wanted? We're going to dive in this case. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Let's dive into it. In the vibrant city of Little Rock, Arkansas, a family thrived with their successful printing business called The Shepherd's Printing. The heart of the family was Leslie, their only daughter. However, the peaceful rhythm of their lives changed when Leslie would fall for a man named Mike McCool. Her parents weren't thrilled about Mike, suspecting that he might be after their daughter's money. This suspicion led to a growing divide between Leslie and her parents. The turning point arrived in 2003 when the tragedy would strike. Leslie's father passed away. Here's where the story takes a curious twist. Leslie wanted to attend her father's funeral, a natural desire for anyone grieving, but her husband Mike disapproved. Staying by his side was on a business trip. Leslie returned home to a particular scene. Her mother, Janie, seemed unusual cheerful and her father's belongings were mysteriously missing. Adding to the intrigue, Leslie's inheritance had drastically dwindled to a mere $20,000 from an estate originally valued between $1.9 million and $2 million. The situation took a bizarre turn when interpreting her father's will, Mike claimed as if Leslie's mother, Janie, died within 30 days of her father. Leslie would inherit the entire estate. Strangely, Janie was brutally stabbed to death in her home on September 12, 2003. Before her death, Janie had experienced fear to Mickey Halloway, a crime scene specialist that Leslie and Mike were plotting to kill her for the money. They arrested Leslie and her husband on the base of Janie's words. But when Mike McCool and Leslie McCool were questioned by the police later that day regarding the murder, they refused to confess on it. A second time, Leslie admitted to stabbing her mother. What she said in court was even more surprising. A shocking turn Leslie stated in her trial testimony that Mike had a tight control over her from the start of their relationship. Leslie claimed that Mike made it his mission to find out where she was at all times of the day. In addition, things became worse in their marriage once she met Michael. He started calling her names and beating her. Leslie's parents disapproved of her connection with Mike, and after an argument with her mother over the property that she owned, she attempted to harm herself. As a child, she also had to deal with her parents' alcoholism and marital issues. Her parents were the only people that she was close to before meeting Mike. Leslie McCool's parents and their relationship became tense. She would be forced to leave her belonged job after Mike McCool scammed her into charging the family's company, Shepherd's Printing Incorporated. For most of the ski holiday, additionally, Mac McCool tricked her into selling her car so he could purchase a Corvette under his father's name. Leslie testified that after Mike read the will, he understood it to mean that he would inherit everything if her mother passed away within 30 days of her father's passing. Leslie told the court that Mike started saying to her that her mom had to die. And when she objected upon this, Mike threatened her, saying, if I tell you to do something, you have to do it or I will kill you first. According to Leslie, Mike came up with a plan to kill her. He would also pressure her by warning her that if she didn't go through with it, or if she told anyone, he would harm both her and her mom. On the day of the murder, Mike left Leslie at her mom's house, saying he'd gone to the park across the street. After waiting for her mother to get home, after around 15 to 20 minutes, he was waiting in the bushes. Leslie chased her inside and stabbed her more than 70 times. After that, 
she stole her father's coin collection, her mother's jewelry, and other belongings from the house before leaving her in her mother's Cadillac. According to the investigation, the pair drove to Hot Springs that afternoon on the day after her mother's passing. Afterwards, they returned to Little Rock when they encountered the police who were looking into the death. Her second interrogation, Leslie McCool admitted to the police and provided them with evidence. They thought incorrectly that Leslie would inherit all of her father's wealth if Janie passed away within 30 days of Lester's passing, and it was. Lester had left Leslie with only $25,000 of his $1.5 million to $2 million estate, significantly reducing her inheritance when she started dating Mike. Prosecutors are requesting the death punishment for her husband, but not for the wife. On May 24th of 2004, Leslie, who was 27 years old, had her own trial because she confessed to killing Janie. And Mike, who was also involved, didn't speak against Leslie because his trial was set to start a few months later. Interestingly, Mike's defense team attended at Leslie's trial to see what the prosecution might be planning for Mike's trial. Leslie had two defenses. One was the dureness of the defense, claiming she had to do it because Mike threatened her life. The other was the defense of mental disease or a defect, stating that Leslie had and abused women and suffered from anxiety and depression. Leslie McCool has contended that her mental health or defect is the reason that she is innocent. I never wanted to do it, she explained, because I never wanted her to hurt her. In the final decision, the attorneys presented the jury with the story of about two individuals who had driven by greed and anger. Did something go wrong? They said Mike supported Leslie in a terrible scheme to harm and steal from Janie. During the trial, Leslie looked different from before. Her bleached blonde hair was growing out and her dark roots were showing. She wore little to no makeup and dressed plainly. This was done by her defense to present Leslie as a conservative Catholic girl that she used to be. The prosecution explained to the jury that Leslie might not be the blame for Mike making her kill Janie, but they argued that Mike didn't force her. They pointed out that Leslie could have gone to the police if she felt threatened by Mike, but she didn't. The pro They argued that Leslie and Mike planned Janie's murder to get a bigger payout. According to his lawyers, Mike only assisted after Leslie had hurt Janie. He was uninformed that Leslie was going to do this. The jury found that although Mike had committed a significant crime, it was not the most horrible. He was given 40 years for one offense and 20 years for another to be served consecutively. Even though the jury didn't say Mike did the worst thing, the lawyers were still happy. The highest court accepted the ruling. Mike later made an effort to improve himself through education. Although he disobeyed the law again while inside of prison, 